This is an I on Annapolis bonus podcast. We are sitting here in the office of Fast Signs on Margaret Avenue, which is a wonderful business right here in the design district, I believe they call it, of Annapolis. But we are here with Ann Myers, who is with the Annapolis Rotary. How are you today? I'm fine. Thanks for having me. Well, we've spoken with the Rotary before. We have talked with the Parole Rotary, and they're not evil, are they? No, no, they're, they're, they're fine. friends. Okay, good. Um, we've also spoken with the Annapolis Rotary. We talked with Shara and Shara about their 100th anniversary, which you guys are celebrating this year. Yeah. Um, but this time, we want to talk about your signature event, which is coming up quicker than anybody probably wants to realize, especially you guys. But the annual Rotary Crab Feast, which is held at the Navy Marine Corps Memorial Stadium every August. And it's always like the first Saturday or first Friday of August, isn't it? Right. It's always been the first Friday. But this year, for the first time, it's going to be on a Saturday, August 7th. Okay, that's cool. Now, this year is also going to be like last year. Last year was a to-go thing, and we know why that was there because of stupid COVID, and nobody knew what the heck was going on, and I don't think anybody would have been comfortable sitting in the... No, and I think right now there's still a lot of people who would be reluctant to get in a crowd of about 2,000 people, which is what the numbers that typically come to the seated crab feast. Is that what it is, 2,000? Yeah, it's enormous. It's such an event, such a regional event. Okay, I'm going to out myself here. Okay, I've lived in Annapolis for 25 years, no. and I have never been to the Rotary oh, Crab no. Feast. Okay, and it's not because I don't like the Rotary. It's not because I wouldn't want to go to the event. I just don't like any kind of seafood. I know I'm living in the wrong town. I probably should be living in Nebraska or Montana <laughs> or something like that, but I don't, I jokingly say that if, there's a, if it can live in, on, or under the water, I won't eat it. Oh, goodness. Um, well, so, but the crab feast, the traditional normal crab feast at the stadium that we do has lots of other food besides crabs. We have barbecue and hot dogs and right. hamburgers and all kinds of other things, watermelon and cakes and corn on the cob. Well, I do know that it is a sellout every year. Yes. And it is a one of the signature events uh, similar to croquet that town right. – absolutely looks forward to. I know. It's definitely part of the town's identity and personality. And it's our 76th year doing it now. But you're right. We are going to do it again as a virtual event where you you drive through the stadium to pick up the crabs that are fresh steamed on site. And we're doing that because it really is still, we still have overtones of the COVID pandemic, of course, and it's just not safe yet. Well, I've, I've talked to a number of people that uh, squawk and moan about different events that are starting to happen now and how they're not full bore. Yeah. And I'm like, you know, planning an event, certainly something as big as the Crab Feast, has got to be like the train leaving the station. I mean, it, mm -hmm. it takes a little bit to get up to speed, and then it gets going, and it takes an awful long time to stop it and change it. So, you know, this planning for probably the planning for 2022 is going to start in, you know, probably a month and a half from now. No, no question. It's a huge undertaking. It sure is. And so I can't say quite yet what we're going to do for next year. Certainly no one can say yet. But, yeah, this is we – there was a point where we had to pick a date and say – it's going to either be a drive through or a seated because there's there's so many moving parts that have to be organized. OK, obviously, I know if I go to the Crab Feast, I, I can buy my ticket. I go there and I sit in those picnic benches with mm -hmm. in those tables with the brown paper and everything else. And I love that Annapolis Green has come in and made that an know, entirely that... Uh, recyclable or yeah, reclaimable or compostable event. And. I, you know, so, I mean, you sit down there with your family and your friends and you're elbow to elbow with, you know, you, you look to your right. It could be the mayor of the town. The left could be the speaker of the house. It could, right. You know, it, it's, it's just a great community event. How does it work in a to-go right. model? Well, we, we miss some of that camaraderie, no question about it. But, but the idea is that you still want to support the Rotary and the community because it's a very important fundraiser. It really helps us support so many nonprofits that that need us more than ever you go onto our website and you order your crabs by the single dozen two dozen half bushel or full bushel and then you have to do you have to order them by friday august 6th by six o'clock and then saturday anytime between 1 and five thirty, you come to the stadium and pick up your order and it's very carefully uh orchestrated and planned. You just drive through. People very nicely hand you crabs and corn. It's all wrapped up so it doesn't leak in your car. And it goes in the trunk of your car, all wrapped up nicely. You get brown paper to have your own crab feast at home. That's and you, and you, it is. It's pretty well thought out. 
And you it's, take it home and have your own crab feast with your own friends. If nothing else, I will say that you Rotarians, both Parole and Annapolis, are pretty well organized. And it's a fine oiled machine. I know with uh, Parole does the parking at the Naval Academy oh, gosh, yes. for football games. And that's that's a finely oiled machine, the way that yeah. that runs. And, I know, you know the, good. the books for international goodwill, certainly the way that before we started recording, I was tell, saying that I usually go to the Navy Fan Fest, which is the, usually the day after your crab feast. And I'm always amazed that somehow you fed 2,000 people the night before, and there's not one trace that right. you were there the yep. following morning at 9 or 10 o'clock in the morning that I it know, was there. And it's, it's amazing. just amazing. <clears throat> well, I've just been in the Rotary a couple of years, and I must say these are the most organized, hardworking people ever. It's pretty remarkable. Well, and you did mention that you've got to order them on the website, and that's annapolisrotary.org. Slash Crab Feast. You can purchase raffle tickets, which are a good deal. That's, you know, hey, yes. who doesn't like a raffle ticket? I know, and what an opportunity. You could actually win up to $1,000. Right, um, all, all the way down to a couple crabs, right? Right, right. Pretty good deal. Can't not, go wrong. Not bad. But, again, you know, I think this probably makes a lot of sense, though, because Friday night, Okay, I've been at work for the week, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm dragging my butt out of the office, and I work from home. But I mean, dragging the butt out of the office on a Friday afternoon at five, and it's like, you know, sometimes you just want to sit at home with a beer, as opposed to, you know, fight the traffic and get into Annapolis and park and walk in and, and have this event. Uh, so I would think that doing it on a Saturday to be able to have it home with, you know, your your own neighbors and your own thing, and, and this would be perfect for a neighborhood. Exactly. To get together. I, mean, I know. A bunch of neighbors can get together and have a huge crab feast. Well, right now you're, you're seeing a lot of with, you know, as we come out of COVID, you're seeing a lot of the neighborhoods are getting food trucks that will come on a certain night. Right. And they'll do it. Same type of a situation. You know, you get good thinking. You get your cul-de-sac together. Go to WinnapolisRotary.org slash crab feast. And, you know, as opposed to a bushel, get, you know, get. 10 bushels. I don't know. I, I, you know I, I, like I say, I don't eat them, so I don't know how many you can eat. But, you know, get them for the whole neighborhood to do that and, and divide it out and, and make the whole cul-de-sac thing. You know, and you hire a band, you could, you could do the whole thing. I know. <laughs> now, you ought to be an event planner. Um, no, that'd be so fun. Good idea. But that, you know, it, it does make sense. And even if it's just your family. Right. Uh, it's, it's great. You've got all sorts of different options, you know, from a dozen to two dozen to a half bushel. What is a how many crabs? How many crabs can you eat? Me personally, yeah, sitting up, um, you're sitting down. I would say a half a dozen uh, extra large crabs. Okay, and, okay, and that's pretty wonderful. Okay, now do you guys go out and catch these crabs in the morning? No, we have <laughs> different providers every year. <laughs> yeah, I think it'll be Shoreline this year, but I, I shouldn't say. I'm not 100 okay. percent sure who it is. So they're not flown in from Vietnam? Oh, no, of course not. They're not they're flown in from the Gulf of Mexico? Absolutely local. Come on, <laughs> these these are Chesapeake Bay blue crab, Yes, right? okay. 100%. Well, you know, that again, that's a huge selling point because there are so many restaurants that are not using right. Chesapeake Bay or they're actually mixing it all up there as well. Right. That's really true. Um, which, is, which is wonderful. No, it's local in, in absolutely every way. The, the people that are putting it on are local. The nonprofits it goes to support are all local. It's a hometown Hometown grown event. Oh, and I want to mention you said you've mentioned a couple times about the nonprofits that you support, okay? And let the cat out of the bag when the Rotary makes all their money off of these crab feasts. Um, it's not divvied up among the volunteers for, you know, oh, 10 bucks for you and 20 <laughs> bucks for you here or there. The Rotary is designed, uh, you know, it's a service above self. Right. That's our motto. And it is all about giving back to the community. That's That's exactly right. I mean, that's. That's uh, what we do. I mean, locally, nationally, internationally, we have a number of projects and priorities, um, water and sanitation, women and maternal health and children. Uh, now the environment is, a, is another leg. Um, education, of course, conflict resolution. We have a number of priorities, but absolutely what we do is lots and lots of projects around town to support the nonprofits, supporting people. Food well, insecurity has been huge lately, you can imagine. Well, I um, think that you're in, in this t day and time right here in 2021 and certainly in 2020 with COVID that the nonprofits in town were, were slammed. Um, you know, probably got in the in the slam line right behind the restaurants, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you know, to, to figure that out. And so, what you're doing is just really absolutely incredible to be able to do that. And I know that 
you, you guys pride yourself on turning this stuff around fairly quickly. I know that, you know, you, you get the proceeds from it and usually within a couple months, right. uh, you're saying, okay, Hey, we've got this, we've got this. And, and then, you know, come the spring, you've got the applications for the scholarships for the students. Correct. Right. Uh, and, and that's by, based on zip code. I mean, you, to keep it local, you right. keep it into these, I think there's maybe six Right. Annapolis right here in the area. zip codes. Yeah. So that, you know, that kid up in Odenton, he's not honing in on the Annapolis Rotary. No, <laughs> right. It's, Rotary money. it's local. Yeah, for sure. But what, how did you, how did the nonprofits react when you were able to help them last year? Oh, goodness. It makes such a difference. I mean, we have all kinds of testimonials and talks from people. We have a number of little 30 second blurbs that we show on Facebook and online and different media platforms um, because it's our centennial year as well. All these nonprofits that are saying, gosh, thanks so much to the Rotary for supporting us because you really have enabled us to, to keep going and, and do our missions. So it's it's valuable. I'm just out of curiosity. Last year, I'm I'm assuming that the to go. You said you served two thousand. I mean, did, did you have two thousand last year come through for the to go, or is it uh, a little bit no. less? No, it was a little bit less. It was the first time, so it was you know it was all new. It was it was new for you, and it was new for everybody else. That's right. It was uh, a real learning curve, and we've learned a lot. We'll do it better this year, but but it was great. We certainly didn't make quite as much money last year as we have in previous years, but we'll go back to well, that know, I, I formal. Don't, I don't necessarily know that that was a to, a to go function. I mean, you know, last year. I, I mean, no. This time last year, nobody knew what the heck was going to come down wow, the line. That's and, the truth. Uh, you know, I'm I I pulled in my my reins. I was you know yeah. I was be, being very careful about what I spent my money on. I mean, it wasn't you know the necessity. Do I need this? Do I need that? And you know, hey, let's let's face it. I mean, the the crab feast is probably not at the top of the list of the the must-haves when you're wondering whether you can make your electric bill. Exactly. Or live. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Stay um, alive. I know. It's, it's, so uh, so that ma- that makes sense. And obviously, I would imagine it probably takes a little bit less uh, human effort, uh, the, you know, feet on the ground to make it work uh, with a to-go. I mean, I, I've, I've seen some of the food distributions that they've been doing, nonprofits have been doing around town. I know uh, the Bay Sox and Homestead Gardens both did like a chicken thing in the middle of this thing. Oh, where I know. They, Purdue would come up with fr- a, a thing of chicken. And it was like, get in line, oh, pop the trunk, put it in, right, off you right. go. And it's, it's a really well-oiled machine to turn around and throw that out. Yeah, I think everybody's trying to be as creative as they can to still – you know, support their mission, keep the traditions going until there are better times and and uh, maintain that fellowship and community that we all have in Annapolis. Well, we do. The Annapolis community is, is so neat. And I, I've talked to so many people in different aspects of how they really do come together. And, you know, my experience last year with Leadership Anne Arundel, I know that you're a, a graduate of the second best class of Leadership Anne Arundel. <laughs> Um, you know, between that, between the nonprofits, the people, you know, I've, I've talked to a couple of nonprofits and said, you know, we didn't know whether we were going to be able to, you know, open the door tomorrow because the lights were not on. Uh, and somebody steps up to the plate and 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 makes it happen. And yeah, we, pretty, we are a very great. giving community. No, I think so. It's it'd be very easy to say, well. Well, gosh, we can't do a seated crab feast. We won't. We won't do anything. We'll just give it up for a year. Well, no. On the contrary, we're not going to do that. We know how much the community needs it, and all the other organizations are doing the same thing. Luckily, really being creative and entrepreneurial to come up with ways to support each other. Right. They didn't give up the need for a year. No. <laughs> Good you know, point. It's, uh, you know that the need was even 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 greater. Uh, again, that's the need this year as well. Um, you know, the Rotary, again, is doing such good stuff. I mean, you've got the scholarships, you've got the nonprofits that you... Thank you. And, and you, the list is usually like about 20 or so nonprofits each year that you... And and uh, there's an application, you know, hey, what are, what are you sure. looking to do do with it? Right, exactly. Um, and, you know, you, you look at... I know last year you looked at things that were actually getting back into the community as opposed to the fluffy things. Right, uh, it's, right. Okay, we're not going to be... We're going to give to a food bank... As opposed to the shoreline restoration Ugh. at some neighborhood. No, you're right. And, and not that that's not important, too, but absolute needs, daily vital needs. Yeah. Right. I mean, I mean you've, got to set, you've got to set your priorities. And that's not to say that the shoreline is not going to be important next year or, or whatnot. But we've, we've got to figure out what the heck we're doing coming out of COVID. Immediately to, to get through it. AnnapolisRotary.org slash Crab Feast is where you want to go. You can just go to AnnapolisRotary.org and you can see events and there's buttons and everything else to go there. 
order your raffle tickets, you order your bushels of crabs, or you can just order a dozen crabs with your corn. Right. And and if you'd uh, like, if there are people and businesses out there, we would love to have some sponsors for this event. There are all kinds of opportunities for signage and and support on our they website. They've got to figure a way to, like, ink through the husk of corn and uh-huh. put, like, a logo on the corn kernels. Mm-hmm. So when you when you, when you you peel, peel it back, there's like, uh, hey, that's, brought to you by the Boatyard Bar and Grill. That's a little out there, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> But that kind of thing, we certainly would like community support to to help the event. And it, as I said before, it is our 100th anniversary. The Rotary was founded, our Rotary Club was founded in 1921. That's pretty amazing. Well, when, when I was talking with Shara and Shara on that, I was absolutely, first of all, amazed that Rotary has been around for 100 years. Yeah. I was more amazed that you guys weren't the first. And I was even more amazed and I didn't know this, that it was an international. Oh, gosh, yes. Uh, and I, I thought, I, for the life of me, I thought it was a, a yeah. United States-based organization. No, it's a, it's really interesting. Rotary is huge yeah. and international. There are 1.2 million people worldwide that belong. It's just a, a remarkable organization. And just in general in the community, you turn around and you look at what a Rotary does, and I know there's several differences. You've got the evenings and the Rotaracts, which is sort of like the little itty bitty baby sister or, the, <laughs> or brother of the Rotary. But you've got parole and you've got Annapolis. I mean, they're they're responsible for the books for international goodwill. They've got yes. the the parking at the Naval Academy. They've got mm-hmm. uh, you've got worked in partnership with the Parole Rotary to do the little libraries, little free libraries, little free libraries right. around that you've seen popping up all over there. And I was again surprised that there was a real process to replacing those books and stocking those up oh, as gosh. opposed to I thought it was just sort of a you know you need a penny need a penny take a penny have a penny no, leave a penny it's pretty well organized i mean you actually have to replace certain books with certain genre and, yeah you know young young adults travel history how, i mean all kinds of sports i mean it's very specific and organized but as you wander around town in the various sections of town the sections Places. I mean, you will see these standalone. They look like birdhouses, colorful birdhouses with doors and windows on them. Mm-hmm. And that's you know, there's I think Isn't there's like great? close to thirty of them now. Um, I think there are twenty that our club has done okay. in partnership with the Parole Rotary. Right, uh-huh. they're great partners. We collaborate as often as we can. And they got the books. They have the books. <laughs> right. When you walk around town and you see these, this is a result of your efforts. You know, the Rotary's efforts. And- I'll tell you, you'd, you'd be amazed. Right now, our club has 142 members, and it's divided into three groups. The, the big group meets at lunchtime every single Thursday at 12 noon. Uh-huh. But there's also a breakfast group and a happy hour group, and those two groups just meet once a month. And it's just to be flexible so people can participate and yet not have to attend every single week, whatever you, works for their schedule. You, you want to make you sure that it, people, right? it, it is accessible. Um, okay, do you go to – which which one do you go to? Do you go to the lunch group? Or I go the, to the lunch group every single week. Have you attended the other ones? Uh, that's terrible of me to say, but only the breakfast group. I haven't been to happy hour yet. Okay. Yeah. But they're wonderful. Which, 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 which is more fun, the breakfast or the lunch crowd? Oh, I think the lunch group is, is it. Oh, you're biased. No, we, it's so <laughs> action-packed. I mean, that's the amazing thing. We have, as I said, about 140 people, and they're all ages, young 30s up to probably 90 right now. And these are motivated people doing projects all over town. Little Free Library is one of them, Crab Feast, Black Tie and Diamonds, our scholarships, right. our, our foundation. I mean, we have several sources of fundraising and funds that we give to the community. Right. Well, do you the Annapolis Rotary? And I know you overlap with parole as far as the areas that you mm-hmm. that you serve. By definition, I mean I know that your scholarships go out to specific zip codes. Are those the defining boundaries for projects, service projects that you do for the most part? I mean, you wouldn't do something up in say Severna Park. Well, sure. I mean, we we um, definitely focus on Annapolis and this area specifically, and for scholarships, very specifically. We have certain right. zip codes that only apply to Annapolis high schools. But some of our other projects, if it Im- if it improves Annapolis and Severna Park or Annapolis and the greater area, absolutely, okay, we'll fund something like that okay. because you you can't draw the line. You know, as soon as you get to Arnold, we're not going to 
help it's, anybody. It's, you, <laughs> you, know? Know, you know, it's like it's like painting. It's like painting a house that has the doorways going from like the living room to the dining room. It has not a doorway, but an arch or a right. opening. Like, where do you stop the one color of paint and no, start the you next? Can't. You know, in the room or on the edge or in the other. Right. <laughs> you, know, you can't quite figure it out. I always uh, trying to figure that out. AnnapolisRotary.org is where you want to go. You want to make sure that you're supporting the 74th? 76th. 76th annual Annapolis Rotary Crab Feast. It's going to be on Saturday, August 7th. You drive up to the Navy Marine Corps Memorial Stadium. You pick up your crabs. You have to order them by the 6th at 6 p.m. Yes, and when you order them, you say what time you want to pick them up. You can pick them up at 1 o'clock or... In a, in a half-an-hour window from 1 to 1.30, 1.30 to 2, 2 to 2.30, etc., all the way until till, uh, 5.30. And so you plan when you want to have your own crab feast and pick up your crabs accordingly. And Now, as far as preparation go to a, a crab neophyte here like I am, these are cooked. They're steamed. Right. So they're ready to eat yes. on the ride home. Well, theoretically, if you, if you wanted to do that. driving. <laughs> so, so there's no real preparation that needed for them once you get home? No. And also you have uh, corn in the cob comes with it. Is that going to be, is that gonna be of, pre-cooked as well? Yes. That's also steamed okay. and ready to go. So you'll get from us brown paper to lay out on your table. You'll get the crabs ready to go, the corn ready to go, and you just get yourself a couple you get mallets? pitchers of beer. And, um, and, yes, we give away mallets. Okay. And generally candy and a couple of other things. But That's awesome. AnnapolisRotary.org. For the 76 Crab Feast, Ann Myers, thank you very much for your time today. Everybody that's listening, go get a bushel or two, get a raffle ticket, and they're a nonprofit too. I'm sure if you go to AnnapolisRotary.org, there is a button that says, hey, I just want to give you guys some money. Oh, um, excellent. And that's, that's always a good... And and join us. Get to know the Rotary. We, we are always welcome people to our meetings. We would... And that, that makes it very convenient because you can meet monthly monthly in the evenings or the breakfast. Right. Where do they meet for breakfast? Or does that vary? Um, it does vary, but okay. now it's at Excellence on Housley Road. I like Road. Excellence. That's one of my favorite yeah. breakfast places. Oh, it's great. Okay. And Lunch Crowd? Uh, lunch Crowd meets at Annapolis Shot Club. Well, they don't allow me in there, so oh. I'm going to have to look at the... Uh... Uh-oh. <laughs> we'll, we'll sneak you in. <laughs> and then the Half the Hour Crowd meets at Gordon Birch Brew. Okay. Over at the Town Center. Yeah. All great places to do. And actually, uh, they all have... Um, you know, between Biersch and the Yacht Club have just great places to be. I mean, the Yacht Club's got some great views, and Biersch has, you know, outside and everything else. AnnapolisRotary.org is where you want to go. Ann Myers, thank you very much for your time today. Thank and you. I'm looking forward to hearing all the great things. And I want to know how many bushels of crabs you sold. When okay. we, well, we're going to revisit this again on August Excellent. 9th. Okay, good. Thanks thank very you. much. Thank you. This has been a bonus podcast from Eye on Annapolis. Please visit us at ionanapolis.net. Follow us on Facebook at All Annapolis and on Twitter at Ion Annapolis. And if you haven't subscribed to the Daily News Brief podcast, go for it. And all of your local news will be delivered to your phone, tablet, or smart device by 6 a.m. every Monday through Friday.